Hey everyone, it's Miss Throwback here from PlayLegit.net. We're going to do the Xbox One unveiling. We already unboxed the PS4 for you last week, so if you want to click the link below, uh, you can go ahead and see that. But I already see a couple pros and cons without even opening the box already. Um, when I went to buy the Xbox One, I got an extra controller. And she said, do you want the controller with the play and charge kit or without the play and charge kit? Um... I'm pretty sure that we use and PS4s come with charge cables on their own without even needing to be asked. So that's kind of a downfall for the Xbox One. I wish they just all came with the charge cable. Each one of them needs to be charged anyway, so it's kind of pointless to buy it without the play and charge. I mean, you're getting the cheaper price, but in the end, you're sacrificing convenience. So I kind of don't like that. And then, but as it goes... This is what's in the box. There's the Xbox One console, the sensor, the wireless controller. Oh, the day one edition wireless controller. Good stuff. Uh, the chat headset, HDMI cable, wireless networking capacity, uh, one year limited warranty, and then 500 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, the box is actually really nice. I like how they designed it. It's nice and clean. The PlayStation 4 had some junk on the back about games. This might be kind of hard to see, but it's a sensor bar, the Xbox One system, the controller, and the controller on the side. Um, but the thing that I was going to say is, basically, the sensor bar comes with the Xbox One. I wish that PlayStation 4 would have put the camera in the box, because... The Xbox One has a sensor bar, the Wii U has a sensor bar, and if that's something that we're going into, the PS4 could have a hard time catching up because they sold their accessories separately, so I could see that being a problem for them. Um, also, the PS4 put a USB port on the front instead of the back, so you can't run, you know, you have this really nice system and you have to run a USB cord in front of it to charge your controller, which I wish they ran it through the back. Wii U did that. We'll see if Xbox One did that. So that's just a couple pros and cons from the systems that I see already. Let's get into the goodies here. Ooh, look how nice the inside of the box is. It's upside down, but I didn't even, uh, I seriously didn't even know it was going to be this nice. Oh my gosh. Jeez, they really know how to put things together in a box. All right, let's see what we have here. Let's get this out of your way. So this is our headset. Looks like we have some kind of control mechanism on that. Oh yeah, we have up, down, I'm sure for volume, and then the microphone mute button plugs right into your controller. I mean, it's a headset. It's nice. You can tell they kind of skimped on it. But I mean, it could be worse for sure. I can see it being kind of chintzy. These, a lot of these are going to break. Maybe you want to invest in a better headset. It's not too terribly comfortable either. The quick setup guide. The thank you for being a part of day one. Okay. Oh, this is to get an account and you can redeem this code to kind of start your setup. This is what you, oh, get equipped. Buy, get Xbox Live Gold. Yep. Oh, by the way, if you get your Xbox One within a certain amount of time after launch, you can get the Xbox Live One Gold um, for $20 off. Oh, and a sticker. I'm wearing the perfect color today. Okay. Controller. We'll take a look at this in a minute. And two AA batteries. Well, thank you. And then here's your HDMI cable. And a ginormous plug again. Xbox is pretty much known for this giant plug. Can you calm down with it? Can you calm down with it? I mean, it's literally a brick. 
Oh, Lord. Well, at least you only have to look at it once when you're setting it up. All right, so here goes this. Oh, this is the, um, this is the cable. Oh, my God. Well, I can already tell you a negative with this. This thing's huge. Okay, this is the this is the connect part of it. Let me take this wrap off, this cellophane, so you can actually see it. Um, this thing is absolutely gigantic. It's bigger than the power cord. Um, it's nice looking. I can see there's a camera right there. I mean, I guess it has a lot of functionality to it, so it makes it heavier, but you're definitely not putting this thing on top of your TV. I can tell you that right now. It's It's got some pretty pretty good weight to it. Um, so this thing's definitely going to have to be sitting below your television. There's no way this is ever going up on top of your TV. Which I guess is good for Wii U, because you don't have to fight between what's going on top of your TV and what's going below, but it might be a problem for some people. Maybe. Here's the system. Ugh. It's the heaviest, biggest one. But... You know, it doesn't really matter once you have it sitting anyway. It's just a good thing to know. Oh my gosh, this thing's heavy. Okay, so let's get this the right way. Here we go. Actually, it's, um, it's really nice. It's comparable to the PlayStation in that it has this, like, smoothed out finish. And it's asymmetrically smoothed out. Here's the top. Um, I'm glad that it has a slot loading uh, feature instead of a tray. That tray was just old school and awful. Um, in the back we have God only knows how many inputs. I mean, it's in insane back here. But that's good because we need all that in a system. And it looks like they, they did. They put the USB ports on the back which I really appreciate. And there's one on the side actually, which is cool because when you're running your charge cables from the system to, to your television, you can run it through the back and you don't have to look at it coming out the front, which is really nice. Let's take a look at this controller. Well, it's really light, but the one that they put in the box is the double A one, which why, why, why didn't you just have everything chargeable? It, I mean, it's the year 2013, and we're just going towards everything being chargeable anyway. So I don't know why they do this, but let's put these batteries in the back and see how it feels with it in there. It's pretty light, so the batteries don't, I mean, it just feels, you know, normally weighted with the batteries in it. Um, it feels really nice. I can say that the PlayStation 4 controller is actually more comfortable to me. And my my favorite controller of last generation was definitely the 360. It's not uncomfortable, but do you see this space at my tr trigger fingers? There's all this space right there. I feel like it could be supported better. Um, probably the top end of this needs to be a little bit wider. I don't know why nobody getting paid at Microsoft uh, can bring up these points, but I mean, you know, they wanted to stick with their signature, uh, their signature controller, which is okay. It's a good controller, but I think it could probably be bettered a little bit at this point. I'd say the PlayStation 4 controller is definitely the most comfortable this generation, but there it is. This is the Xbox One, everyone. Click on our PlayStation 4 unboxing, check this video out again, and as always, have fun and play legit.